How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be recording another video. Today we're going to be looking at the difference between Harvest Full and Harvest Mini. Uh, if you don't already know, Harvest Mini is available for free and the full version of Harvest is our paid product and there's obviously a couple differences between the two and this video is just to help you decide whether or not you need the full version or if the mini version will work fine for your setup. Let's start by comparing the interfaces and you'll see there's a lot of difference between the two. So this is the full version of Harvest and this is what the mini version of Harvest looks like. And you can see there's preset drop downs for your scales. There's also an octave selector, preset rhythm selector, which is the same in both softwares. So you can see it right here. And in the mini version, it is in the bottom left corner. Other similarities is this tap button and that's for tapping in rhythms with your mouse. So if you're playing in the DAW, each time you click on this tap button, a new note appears and that's the same in both. So we already have the scales the same, the tap button the same, the preset rhythms the same. There's also a bars knob. So Harvest and Harvest Mini can both do sequences up to 16 bars long. And that is not different. It's right here in the full version. The note length has the same system. Uh, so there's a regenerate button, which works the same as well in both for full and mini. You can see it works like that in mini and like this in the full version. Each click regenerates a sequence. Other similarities, we have one effect in the mini version and yet we have eight effects in the full version but that one effect is in the full version that's the rest effect the piano roll works pretty similarly you can click in notes by double clicking and you can drag notes and that works the same way in harvest full and two more similarities there's a lock all tool in the mini version you press this all the notes become locked at the same time and in the full version that's the same thing but over here and there's a save button and that will just open up a window where you can save your MIDI files. Same with Harvest, it's right there. So those are the similarities. Again, everything that Harvest Mini has, of course, Harvest Full has as well. So that's preset scales, that's octave selection, that's tapping with a mouse, that's preset rhythms, that's locking all, that's the changing the number of bars, the note length, uh, the rest effect, the interactive piano roll, the regenerate button, and the save button. So now I'm going to go into the differences between the two. And the first difference I'm going to look at is this edit button. So uh, in the mini version, all we have here is this preset drop down. You can choose scales and then there's also chords and that's included in both the free and the full version. However, uh, this horizontal keyboard, which you may have noticed popped up is exclusive to the full version and you can use it to click in custom scales so that you can choose something that doesn't look like a scale that looks something like this. And not only can you click in notes, but by enabling the edit key, if you have a MIDI controller plugged in, you can also insert a note selection by using your MIDI controller, which is a lot more intuitive if you're already using your MIDI instrument. That's already one of the most important differences between the two softwares is the ability to add in your own note selections as opposed to being limited to the scales and the chords in the library. Next up is the quantize knob. In the mini version, the quantizing is limited to what you see on this grid, which is a uh, 1 16th notes. But in the full version, you can change it from anywhere from off, which is represented by the infinity sign, to 1 64th and to 1 3rd. So that's really a lot more control you have over your rhythms, especially when you're entering notes by tapping. You can quantize the input while you're tapping it in. So here's the second major reason that Harvest Full is better than the mini version, and that's this MIDI tapping. So in the mini version, you'll see there's no MIDI tap enable. And what that means is that you have to use your mouse if you're going to tap in a custom rhythm. If you're not using a preset, you have to tap in using your mouse or you can click in, but neither is as intuitive or as useful as the MIDI tapping, which is if you, again, have your MIDI controller, if you press play in the DAW, you can use tap using your MIDI controller instead of your mouse, which is just a lot more musical. And here's what it would sound like. You can change the quantizing. I had it at 16th here and that was helpful, but if you were doing something a bit faster, you could turn it to 30 seconds and here's what that would look like. The quantize knob also affects how quantized the dragging will be. So if I have the quantizing on 30 seconds, then I can drag and it'll snap to every 30 second note. And if I have it on 16th, then it'll snap only to the nearest 16th notes. The ability to tap using your MIDI instrument is another really key difference between the two softwares as it just gives you so much more power to defining your rhythms within your style. Now moving on to the third most important difference is this individual lock tool. Now the mini version has lock all 
And locking, by the way, is keeping a note in place, keeping it immune from being regenerated. So you can see some of these are locked and some of these are unlocked. And every time I press regenerate, all the locked notes stay in the same exact place and all the unlocked notes move around. So you can use that to build up sequences. Uh, if you already have a part that you like, then you can build on top of that with just, just by testing and trial and error that way. But with Harvest, you have the ability to lock individual notes. So instead of being limited to lock all, which is located right here, you can individually lock notes. So let's say, for example, these three notes are just amazing to you. And then these four notes just are perfect. But everything else, you know, you kind of want to keep hearing differences. Then you can regenerate those, not those notes. And the notes that you locked will stay in place. This is a really key difference because it really gives you control over the randomization. So you're working iteratively. So you'll have pieces that work and pieces that don't work. You save the pieces that work and then you regenerate the pieces that don't work. And that's just a, a key part of the Harvest workflow that is just not included in Harvest Mini. There's still some flexibility you can do by uh, locking things and then deleting notes or by just being clever by, by using the lock all tool. However, the individual lock tool is one of the most important features that Harvest has to offer. And that really sets Harvest apart from some of the similar products out there. Moving on to the effects, and you can see that there's eight effects compared to Harvest Mini's one effect. And I'll just go over those one by one quickly. And while they are nice to have, they're not the game changers, the custom note selection, the MIDI tapping, and the individual lock tool. The effects are just nice to have on top of that. The ascend effect, if you were to turn it all the way up, you would see only uh, patterns that go up. And this descend effect, as you might imagine, only descending patterns. If you were to turn them both on at the same time, you can see it goes up and down. The next effect is the chord spread tool. So if you were to have, let's say, these three note chords, often you'll have notes that are next to each other, which when you're making chords, they can be nice, but sometimes you don't want that. So you could turn a sequence that looks like this, where some of the notes are too close together. If you turn on the no, the chord spread effect uh, and you turn it up quite high, uh, you'll notice that it happens less frequently, that these chords end up being more spread out. So the next effect is the rest effect. And yes, it is in the mini version. However, there is a difference. And just a brief overview of the rest effect, it gives each note a chance of not appearing or being replaced with a rest. So uh, as you turn it up, uh, fewer and fewer notes appear. And the rhythm is different each time because each note is, has a chance of not of showing up at all, which results in different rhythms. Uh, it works the same way in Harvest Full, um, as you can see different rhythms are being generated each time. However, uh, if you like, let's say this is a perfect rhythm for you and this is what you wanted, instead of recreating this rhythm or losing it by clicking regenerate, you can press render and that, as you can see, turns off the rest effect. And so now this is my rhythm. Every time I press regenerate, it's gonna be this rhythm. And that's if you find the perfect thing uh, while you're regenerating rhythms. You find the perfect rhythm and it looks like this. Again, you press render, it turns off the effect and that just keeps your rhythm like this. It renders your rhythm. And that in this way, this is how Harvest can randomize rhythms. If you were in Harvest Mini to keep this rhythm, you'd have to remember it and tap it in manually or double click it in manually, which is a lot more work. The next effect on our effects board is the humanize effect. When this is pressed, you can see each of these notes shifted over a little bit, going from this, to this. It, that basically just randomizes the timing of each note uh, just to simulate a little bit of a, more of a human feel. And you can turn it down um, with this level knob and you'll see it's, it's less affected as it was before. Or you could turn it up and hit the button again and you can see things move a bit more dramatically. All right, the next effect is the start point button. And every when this effect is turned on, every note that's clicked becomes the first note of the sequence. And then you can see that the whole sequence actually shifts over. If you click this note in the middle of the sequence, this will become the first note in the sequence. And this will become the second half. You can see everything moves over to the left. And now that note I clicked is the first note. Then what was once the first half of the sequence is now the second half of the sequence. And so that's just if what you create ends up working, but you want to change where the loop starts, uh, you'll use the start point effect to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Now our next effect is the individual note probability tool. So while this is turned on, you can see that this the piano roll just turned into a bar graph and that basically gives the probability of each note showing up in your sequence uh, and you can click and drag them to raise and lower their probability. So let's say we had a pattern that looked like this. The C, the D, and the G should have the highest probability of showing up while all the rest should kind of not show up at all and this F should kind of be the least likely thing to show up. So you can click this, you can click the circle to make that disappear. And as I regenerate, sure enough, C and D are the most popular notes. And of course there's a G too, no Fs at all. And as I do this, that'll be a pattern. The G is coming up, the C, the D is coming up. It's not always going to take over. It is going to just be a probability. And that just gives you more control over your sequence. It's useful for pulling out specific sounds of your note selection. Uh, the next effect that we have on the line is the pitch effect. And it's very simple. It just pitches up or down by a number of semitones. And if we want to increase the pitch, then we turn on the pitch effect. And let's say this is 12 semitones. As you see, it says FX12. That, that means 12 semitones. So that's one octave. But it doesn't have to be one octave. It can be that's six semitones. So... So the pitch effect is useful for changing the key of your sequence without having to do that much work. So that covers the effects and I will do another video to go into more detail for each effect um, because there is more detail than I mentioned. However, moving forward, um, we have the live mode tool. And so this is another important difference and it really opens up the possibilities of what you can do with Harvest because it allows you to play uh, basically live sequences. So let's keep this rhythm the same. and. There's another video that goes over live mode in detail, but I'll show you quickly what it does. Each time I press a note or a chord on my keyboard, that becomes my new note selection. So I can play keeping the same rhythm and changing the note selection live as I play on my keyboard. Moving on almost to the end here, we can see more features that we have. Uh, this is undo and redo. It's just a back button and a forward button. It's pretty simple. Uh, if, as I press back, it takes me back in time and shows me each of those sequences that I just created. Uh, it works with live mode as you just saw, and it also works normally. Um, as I regenerate, you can see I can just go back and forth um, to find something that I may have created a minute ago that I want to find and pull it back up just so I can keep it. And the final difference between Harvest Full and Harvest Mini is the load button. So I'll load in a new MIDI file and you'll see what happens. Okay, so a couple things happened. Since this was a four bar sequence, my bars uh, number is set to four and it also zoomed out so I can see this entire thing. The note selection is based off of what I had and the rhythm is, of course, the rhythm that it is. And this is what that loaded MIDI file sounds like. Uh, and as you can see, the note selection is based entirely off of what was here. Each note that was in the MIDI file became part of the note selection. And the rhythm, of course, is the same. The bars number is set to the bars number of the saved file, which is four. And so now what we can do is we can regenerate, we can use all of Harvest's effects, we can lock notes in. Essentially, we can make an entirely new sequence based off of an existing sequence using the same rhythm, the same note selection, and using all of the effects that Harvest has. So you can load in MIDI files that you've created with Harvest, or if you have a part A and you'd like to create a part B that was very similar, then you can do that. You can change the note selection so that things end up being a bit different. and you can continue to use the workflow of Harvest to narrow things down uh, as you normally would write with Harvest. And that's it for the load tool. And that covers pretty much all of the differences between Harvest Full and Harvest Mini. Uh, another, another difference I didn't mention was the fact that you can double click on the vertical piano roll in the, in the full version. And that's just for quick selections, quick edits. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything 
all of the differences between the full version and the mini version. So hopefully that wasn't too much to talk about in one video. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this video helps you come to a conclusion about whether or not you should buy the full version or if the mini version is good enough for you. Again, the custom note selection, the MIDI tap and the individual lock tool, the key differences between the two. I hope this helped clear things up about the difference between the two versions. Thanks so much for watching this video. Have a great day. See you on the next one.